The following video contains mild lore spoilers for Final Fantasy XIV, in particular the Shadowbringers and Endwalker expansions. I can hardly imagine why you'd have clicked on this in the first place if you weren't already familiar with Emmett Selk and his story, but should you be out of the loop, there's your warning. Nevertheless, I hope that you enjoy. Hmm? Well, hello there, little one. It's too late for children to still be out. Are you waiting for your parents? Here, I'll wait with you for a bit for them to return. Is this your first time in Amarat? Visiting from the outer colonies, perhaps? Your garments are clearly of a different make than those of the capital. It must be quite out on the fringes. Nibelona or Idlebeck would be my guess. I have a friend who would know. A traveler who gets out of the city more than I. Speaking of raiments, whatever happened to your hood and mask? I understand the inconvenience they can be, I really do. But it's important to start practicing modesty early on. It trains us in humility and defer- Wait a moment. Look at me. Your features are far too mature for a child's. Yet your stature is even less than one's. I thought you were merely underdeveloped, but- Hold still there. Let me truly look at you. Indeed, your etheric density pales in comparison to that of a babe. Who and what are you? The recognition in your eyes betrays that you are in possession of a rational soul. Speak, please. Your voice is faint to me as though from a great distance, and your tongue betrays foreign origin. Yet you clearly understand what I'm saying. Troublesome, and curious, but mostly the former. A cognizant shade has presented itself to me. Others gifted neither with my sight nor station might ascribe the cause to be a visitor from the ethereal sea, but no, little one, that I am the keeper of the underworld. I know the colors of all the souls that are my dearly departed wards, and you are most certainly not one of them. If deceit was your aim, you've picked a poor quarry. But then again, you didn't approach me. Twas the inverse. A simulacrum of a person, but lacking our speech, nor spiritual opacity. A real enigma you are. I'm not fond of unsolved mysteries. Well, it would be a dereliction of my duty to just leave you be without understanding your nature. Yet, I have an appointment that I must make. Come along then, let us walk together. Upon further cogitation, I have a new working hypothesis. You are a familiar, created by some talented yet irresponsible mage who has elected to eschew the proper channels of conceptual peer review. But to what end? What use is an entity who can barely interact with its environment nor even speak the common tongue? You'd be a useless servant or messenger, all you can do is gather information. Given your conspicuous appearance, it can't be for spying. Thusly, assuming your creator was possessed of even a sliver of good sense, and that may be an unjustified assumption, it is your wont to simply learn for your own sake, rather than act on that information. It's a strange experiment, and all the more fortunate that my appointment is with someone who will appreciate it. 
So it seems, little one, that you and I share a common destination this evening. In fact, you can see it just there, off in the distance, the Bureau of the Architect. There, concepts like you are submitted. A new animal, vegetable, or mineral can be designed by a citizen and brought to the Bureau for inclusion in reality. After review and testing, the excellent ones are approved, created, and sent to the world. It's a beautiful thing, this act of deliberate, careful creation, and one of mankind's most important duties in the stewardship of our star. Ah, and nearby the Bureau you can see a few other offices. The Interpreter's Parthenon, the Etheric Oculum, and the Chamber of Asclepius are all contained in that sector of the city. And way off in the distance, there's the Amphitheater Anida, which I've no doubt Igeorm, not content to keep to the Hall of Rhetoric, has occupied for her evening exhortations to the masses. Fortunately, we're far enough away to be safe from the sound of her prattle. Ah, oh, what's that face? I've already established that you're no threat to me. So why not use our stroll to educate you on the things that any citizen would know? Besides, you've, you've caught me in a good mood. Walking the streets of Amaranth on the way to see a friend would lift anyone's spirits. And doing so in the company of someone physically incapable of causing trouble only sweetens the experience. The way you keep looking around at everything is this actually your first time here? Do you even know where you are? Just raise your left arm if you've never been to this city before. Oh. Oh. It seems I've assumed far too much. Well then, as we come to the end of our walk, I shall come to the beginning of the subject. We currently stroll the streets of Amarant, capital of Etheris, the star on which we all live. Here lies the seat of mankind's power and dominion, and where our ruling body, the Convocation of Fourteen, holds court. Most of us reside here, with one exception. Azem's duties lie outside the city. Well, now that's an inquisitive look. Yes, I said us. Did you think I should claim some title as lofty as Keeper of the Underworld idly? Emmet Selk is my title, and functionally my name. Each of us take on our convocation duties as our identities for as long as we bear the weight of them. By coincidence, my associate, we're on the way to meet, was once a candidate for the role as well. He declined and volunteered me in his place. Perhaps one day I'll forgive him for that. If tonight's tea is as good as the last, that day may come a little sooner. And here we are. Now there's the man of the hour. Oh, and we've got a third for the evening. Let me get a second kettle going. I think we'll need it. I sense a story brewing, and so should tea. Please, come in, both of you. After you. Be at peace, little one. We'll get you sorted out. 